My name's Sam Macy and welcome to my shop. So today we're gonna give you a tour of my entire shop and studio space. And along the way, I'll kind of explain the process I go through in order to make my art. If you're not familiar with my art, this is the type of thing I create. I call it a shadow box. It is a handmade frame with obviously a handmade, hand cut out photo or realistic rendering of this particular one is Lake Champlain, but I do all kinds of different shapes, sizes, designs, and what have you. This is all made from exotic and domestic wood. There's no paints or stains involved. Um, so everything, all the colors represented are from different species. And I try to source as much local wood as I can, but I also have to find some exotic wood when it comes to some of these blacks and reds and purples and things like that. My shop is essentially a two car garage. I think it's 24 by 24 and it was actually converted into an apartment maybe four years ago and I converted it back into kind of a garage type space. One thing that's really handy is because it was an apartment, all the outlets are at four feet in this back corner or kitchen area. So that's kind of handy for me. There's one back corner that's also my office. It's pretty big and really it's just kind of our guest room slash my computer space. And I'll show you that a little bit at the end here. But I think the best way to go about it is to just start in this corner and kind of work our way around. There's two main spaces in here. The first, this table saw area shop space, you know, where I make all of my frames and do all the assembly. And then on the other side is my scroll saw station where I spend a lot of time cutting out these templates and cutting out the pictures that go inside the shadow box. Over here is basically glass storage. Um, I cut all my own glass. There's big sheets, smaller sheets. This stuff is all cut out for 11 by 14, 16 by 20s and 10 by 10s. That's all stored in there. And then any extra materials I have like backing and stuff is all stored up here in this little area shelf thing. I've got bigger glass over there. This drawer right here is something I just came up with and I'll give you kind of a background. I have a background in engineering and also in art and so I think what you'll find in this shop is there's a lot of like integrated technology and it is a small space and I do a lot in here and I need to utilize like every little inch of it I can. Um, so I'm just gonna show you like some of the cool stuff I've come up with in order to be more efficient in here. This is one of them. This is my camera drawer. I do a lot of filmmaking in here. This is basically where all of my camera stuff, chargers, things like that live. It has a dust cover. It's fully electrified so I can charge whatever I need to. I also have a four inch fan in there. And what that does is basically there's a filter on the front and the fan on the back and any air in here that has dust or anything in it gets caught in this filter so it doesn't get all over my camera stuff and doesn't get all over the batteries and cases and anything I've got going on in here. While we have this open, I might as well show you. This, this sign I made a couple years ago and this is just kind of an idea I've had in my head for a long time. It's essentially a prohibition style sign. So if you open this drawer, we have it open already. If you reach your hand under here, there's a button. You'll hear a click. This drops down and as you can see, I've got a little selection of bourbon in there. Um, I obviously don't mix this shop with alcohol, but it's just kind of a cool thing that I've always dreamed about having one of those. So moving on from here, we'll turn around and take a peek into the main area. This is really where the process starts. So like I said, everything's handmade, including the frames. The frames come in in one by six boardage, which I can store either in my lumber rack or take right through the door. First step is basically milling it up on the table saw and milling it up on the chop saw, which you'll see in a second here. And you'll see a lot of machines around here that are kind of dedicated to that frame making. Because I couldn't find a frame that I liked on the market, I decided to come up with my own. It's essentially a double frame where the backing is an inch and a half from the glass and that's why we call it a shadow box. So wood comes in here. Typically I'll mark it all out. I've got some templates for that depending on which size frames I need to make and then it all goes over to the chop saw to, to be chopped into certain lengths and then comes back over here to the table saw to be ripped to width. This is my miter saw station. So like I said, this is where everything comes to be cut to length. 
and I've got a couple different miter saws over here. And before I get too far ahead of myself, any furniture in here, this miter saw included, that workbench we just came from, and then as you'll see, my CNC enclosure and my wood storage, all of this furniture was uh, made by me in here. So this shop is basically a complete woodworking furniture shop if you wanted it to be. Uh, besides it being a little bit small, it works great for that kind of stuff. Everything is built from maple plywood and mahogany trim. It all just kind of matches and I like the look of it. This is a 10 inch sliding compound miter saw from Makita, which I really, really like. And then over here, this is really the backbone of this frame making operation. This is a 10 inch Makita saw on a 64, 67 inch clear mount miter sled. It's basically dedicated for cutting 45 degree angles. And in the past I had used a table saw sled for cutting miters for frames, but this has just made my life incredibly easy. Um, you just set your depth and go. Super nice. All of these drawers are full of different woodworking tools and things, uh, tape measures, pens, basically whatever you need. Chisels, hammers, tape, all of my consumables that I use for packaging and labeling are in here. And all of my hand tools, like cordless saws, cordless anything, that's all stored in here. That makes life really easy. I also have all of my drill storage and things right here, as well as my chargers and any kind of batteries and stuff I might need. And then kind of scooting over here to the outfeed table. This is the main workbench or outfeed table as it's commonly referred to, um, because it's anything that comes out the table saw ends up on here. This is a design I came up with and I've changed a couple different times. This is basically a countertop with mahogany trim. Glue doesn't stick to it, things slide on it really easy and it's really durable. Um, it has a leaf that can come out if I need more space. And there's some random bit storage and stuff on this side and on the other side I'll show you another thing I kind of came up with for small part storage. So this guy was part of my old workbench, like I said it's been changed a couple times. Um, but this is basically a bunch of sustainers with any kind of small parts you'd need. This one, this particular one is my electrical box um, and that really has to do with just stuff I've put together in the shop. But a lot of different parts that I use for assembling shadow boxes come right out of this little station here and it just kind of tucks away real nice and clean and organized, which I, which I really like, you'll see. While we're over here, as you can see, I'm in the process of batching out some frames. I do this maybe once a month and this is essentially what they look like when they come off the table saw and go through the miter saw process. And this one here is ready for sanding. Um, but uh, like I said, it's just a double frame. I've changed this design a little bit since I first made them, but uh, I think we're finally down to something we really like. I also make some regular picture frames. My wife's a photographer, so she's got a good connection. These are for her. This is basically the back end of the shop. More screw storage and hardware storage up here. And because like I said, this was a kitchen, I do have water here. So I installed a shop sink. That makes like cleaning and cleaning paint brushes, ah, washing your hands, stuff like that makes it really nice. Um, over here is my bandsaw. This is a 17 inch, two horsepower grizzly bandsaw. Any of the wood that you see inside of a shadow box, all that quarter inch exotic and domestic wood. I do all my own milling. So basically it comes in in thick boards like this and I resaw it and then sand it, bring it to width back over there. I do all of my own milling in house. This is kind of the powerhouse when it comes to making thick boards thinner, essentially what you're doing. And next to the sink, you'll notice this base craft looking piece of equipment here. This is, I call it the control panel, but all it is is just a bunch of light switches and integrated LEDs so I can control all the lights in the shop. Depending on what I'm doing, if I'm setting up kind of a creative shot, stuff like that, so uh, it makes it easy. And I also have my dust collection hooked up to that, as well as any outlets in the shop. Those are all wired in here so I can control them instead of plugging and unplugging certain things in the shop. And I mentioned dust collection. I do have four inch dust collection throughout the entire shop. Any piece of equipment you see in here is already hooked up. So when I flip that switch, open the blast gate, I've got dust collection uh, wherever I am, wherever I need it. The other thing you'll notice is this gray two by four frame. I call that the cage. And uh, one thing you'll notice is nothing besides maybe pictures and a few things attached to the ceiling is screwed into the wall. 
when I was building this shop, I knew that I might outgrow the space and I wanted to be able to take everything out of the shop when that time came without doing too much damage. So like I said, nothing's attached to the walls really. And on that note, everything you see in here, including the miter saw station is actually on wheels. So I can wheel everything out the door when that time comes. We're getting a little bit close, you'll see. It's kind of cramped in here. But it's just really nice having everything be mobile, even if I wasn't gonna move. It's nice being able to create big spaces if you're building big furniture or just getting stuff out of the way to clean. This is more of a toy than anything. This is my CNC machine and CNC enclosure that I built. I don't use the CNC machine to make my art, but it does come in handy for engraving stuff, cases, plaques, things like that. Little pieces that somebody might want added. But really, I've always just like loved CAD software and creating stuff, 3D models and things. And so I've always kind of had an obsession with CNC. The CNC enclosure is really handy. I do a lot of my assembly right here at this table and I have all of my small tools and things I use for assembly right here behind me. It just makes things super efficient. It also has integrated lighting and some electronics built in, particularly the router and sander over here, which I use a lot for frames as well. This is a laptop holder I made, so my CNC machine runs off of a laptop, and that's just kind of a catch-all for, well, coffee right now. And of course, that brings us to the scroll saw station. So this is where I spend a lot of time, as you can imagine, I have an aluminum cage I built above this basically it just houses all of these lights. It also houses some camera arms. I do a lot of filmmaking in here and this allows me to kind of get an overhead shot or some interesting shots of me scroll sawing. This is a Swedish made scroll saw um, I got last year. I'm super happy with it. I think you pronounce it Pegas. I'm not entirely sure. Um, as well as a built-in light. This is all on a stand desk. So that goes up and down. So I can either sit here and scroll or I can stand. I've got that option if I want it. Um, I also have a foot switch down here that controls the saw, which makes uh, makes it hands-free. Over here is my blade storage. These are just PVC pipes that I've screwed into a piece of walnut, and uh, I can store all my little blades over there. So this little station is uh, where I spend a lot of time, to say the least. And I think that about does it for the shop tour. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was a nice little look into how my art is made. If you've got a question or something, just leave it in the comments, I'll try to answer it. And again, thank you so much for joining me. It's been fun. We'll see you next time.